Hello, experts. Once again, welcome to the Rock Diagnostics Podcast. Today, we go in a slightly unconventional direction from what we usually do. We're going to talk about politics. And to talk about politics and how it affects the medical laboratory science field today, we have Freedom Kocha with us. How are you today, Freedom? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine too. It's nice to meet you. Uh, nice to see someone that wants to talk a little bit about politics. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was the reason that pushed you to want to talk about politics and how it affects me- the medical laboratory science field? Um, we are a growing profession, so a lot of um, where we were before and where we are now, uh, the wide gap, and we're able to come to where we are because of um, this topic. So I feel we, we still have a long way to go. The only um, aspects of um, politics that can also you know, solve this issue and medical laboratory science itself what got you interested in the field um okay my uncle is a scientist the motivating factor yeah but aside from that like the field itself uh not really um prior to entering the uh, profession i i didn't even know much about the profession i just saw my uncle as a role model so because when i you know entered i started you know, loving the profession so how does um, politics affect medical laboratory science from your point of view? Okay. Um, first of all, our profession is a relatively new profession, in quotes, when compared to you know, the uh, professions like um, medicine, nursing, and um, pharmacy. We yeah, are um, relatively new. And for a profession that is um, coming up, um, you have health policies, health policies and decision makers, people that uh, see what happens in the, in the profession. So, and most of them are politically uh, politically oriented. So if you don't get involved in what is happening, of course, uh, uh, people will be taking decisions on your behalf, um, whether it affects you or not, or whether you like it or not. So yeah. it's important um, people in the profession you know, um, venture into um, these decision making bodies so that when you know issues of, of uh, matters you know, concerning the profession are being discussed, they won't just um, hear them in the news. But there are some people that would say that as medical laboratory scientists or are people or as people that are involved in the healthcare sector, we should not get involved in politics because politics should not be allowed to get into the laboratory. So how do we juxtapose these two things? It is a very funny thing because the truth about politics, uh, it's, it affects you whether you like it or not. It affects you directly or indirectly. We have so many medical doctors that are politicians. It doesn't take away their license from them. So... In, in a profession, everybody mustn't be on the bench. That's just the truth. Everybody wouldn't be in the hospital. There are yeah. there are so many um, places um, of a profession one can you know, find themselves. So it doesn't just end in graduating. You find the work in a hospital and you're practicing. What are you practicing? Yeah. So what you're essentially advocating for is um, that we as medical laboratory scientists, at least some of us, should get more interested into should get more interested in politics so that when debates are had that can affect the sector, we have a voice there in the room that can steer things in a direction that's also going to be good for the profession as a whole. Yeah, I love what you said, a voice, yeah. That is the perfect thing, a voice. Yeah. So your voice, if you don't have a voice, uh, this one will always be against you. Yeah, that's true. Now, in your own case, so you've been involved a little bit in politics, I guess, at the students, how do I put it, at the collegiate level, right? Um. Yes, I'm still a final year student. All right. Now... Do you have you seen other students that are involved in medical laboratory science showing some sort of interest in that field, or are they more the type that wants to stay like next to the bench? <laughs> okay, um, I will use uh, from my own experience and um, in my own departments, we are heavily involved in politics. Heavily. Okay. All right. Now, some some that are in labs, sometimes we, some people anyway, get into the laboratory sector because they don't necessarily want to be in front of cameras. Like they want to stay away from people. Now, but let's say someone that is watching this, that is understanding that, okay, it might be in their best interest to start getting involved a little bit more in politics. What are some things you would recommend? What should they start doing? How can they start getting involved, make their voices heard? heard? help the profession develop? Okay, um, the truth is, everybody uh, mustn't be a politician. In fact, if you have uh, a 
pool of politicians. Just few of them are at the top there. So it doesn't mean that the people at the baseline are not also involved in politics and what's happening. Um, for yeah. example, as uh, at the student level, we have programs we organize. We have um, programs like the presidents of the association. And the association organized that is the student body. The programs are for the students also. So as students, for a start, it's important you, know, you avail yourself in one way or the other. You mustn't be the person, you know, like target man that everybody is seeing, but at the level you are, you can get involved. So by participating yeah, but... in activities. So I said there are activities, a host of them, you know, organized by, you know, these um, student bodies or um, the leaders of the profession, like the mm-hmm. World Donor or the World Donor Day, um, medical outreaches. Um, these are stuff you can get involved in. So you mustn't be a called a politician to you know, get involved in such things. Yeah, I think some people, most people, don't really view those as political activities, though, like outreach. I think outreach, you would get like a lot of medical laboratory scientists that want to be part and that want to take part in that. Same thing with, let's say, events that are happening on, let's say, a World Donor Day, but I don't think many would necessarily see that as being part of politics. Yeah, it's it's not mere uh, um, terms, you know, in quotes politics. But the truth is, those uh, those stuffs are mainly organized by the bodies, and these bodies were elected through a political process. I don't know. I don't know that you understand. Yeah. And these people, yeah, they were elected and they are organizing it. So. It's all, like I said before, we are indirectly or directly involved in other way mm-hmm. in politics. So it's, it's something that we can't, you know, so imagine um, electing maybe um, people that are incompetent. I don't think there will be such activity. So it's all like uh, intertwined together. So, yeah, I mean, but I mean, it's the case in many countries where you may have um, an association of medical laboratory scientists and the heads as an example, is going to be nominated, say, by maybe a minister or is going to be nominated by, let's say, the president of the country. And so at some level, you need to be involved in politics so that your name can even be there in the running in some cases. Because, I mean, yes, you may have the experience, but if you're unlucky and you're in a situation where you have another medical laboratory scientist that, let's say, is involved in politics, politicians see him all the time, they are used to working with that person, it will be easier for them to put the name of that person in there rather than putting your name, even though you have the experience. And so for like back uh, a couple of years ago, you'd hear stories about um, people that getting promoted because their boss looks at it as, well... You are too good at your job. Like at that technical place that you are right now, you are too good. I cannot remove you. So the person that's likely less good than you, let me put him above you and then you can keep doing that job. And so that's sort of, I think, what you're trying to say, where in a sense, um, you need to get involved so that people at least know that you are capable in that arena. Don't just see you as a technical person, but see that you also have like an administrative, a ba- managerial background yeah. that you can lead people, yeah. that you can be a leader. That way they can actually throw your name in the ring whenever there are those positions available. There are also many countries where you will get a situation where medical laboratory scientists aren't necessarily involved. And so you'll see that, yes, it's still the health, same healthcare se- sector, but you'll see maybe doctors making all the decisions, but those decisions will be based on their experience within medicine, not necessarily having as good an understanding of what is happening in the laboratory. And so the decisions you get aren't necessarily always the best for the lab, but you you have to follow them. And because there is no one, say, in those rooms to share their opinion, to give a voice to those who have remained in the laboratory, decisions get passed that are not necessarily, from the point of view of the lab, like the best decisions that could have been taken. Yeah, I understand perfectly. Okay, well, for example, okay, there is, let me give an example. There is, uh, in Nigeria, so there is this um, stuff that's also hanging, you know, um, who heads the uh, medical laboratory services. Yeah. So it is, yeah, it is an issue here because um, if you say you are a profession, that means you should, your senior, you know, scientists need to you know, head the profession. Yeah. So if you say you're a profession and you're an independent profession at that, that means 
your top people in the profession needs to be at the helm of affairs. So, yeah. for example, over here, over here, we have um, um, nurses, you know, heading the nursing services. Mm-hmm. We have um, pharmacists heading the um, pharmaceutical services. But then in medical laboratory science, you have pathologists heading it. And we're also calling ourselves a profession. So uh, yeah. the truth of yeah, the truth of the matter is actually the matter has, you know, um, we've won the matter, but it's it has not been implemented mm-hmm. because the people that will implement it are still the people we are fighting against. So it's an issue. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, but... imagine, yeah, yeah, imagine if um, you have people maybe in the National Assembly or in the Ministry of Health, people that are uh, scientists. Mm-hmm. So these decisions won't be very hard to implement. So, but um, you come over to the um, uh, the assembly, uh, you have people that you are fighting against. They are majority. You come to the uh, Ministry of Health, um, the federal level. The people you are fighting against are uh, majority. Come to even the advisors to the governors and presidents on health. They are still the people you are fighting. So it's it's an issue. <laughs> So that's why we need to, you know, get involved. Um, seriously, yeah. we need to get involved. I've been hearing about the, I'd say, beef between the pathologists and med lab scientists in Nigeria, but I never really understood like the whole story. Like, tell us a little bit how, what exactly is happening in that situation. Um, okay, I don't have first-hand information. I'm still a student. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm no, I'm not. I don't have direct um, listen, but um, from my um, own perspective and what I understand. Okay, like I said before, um, the highest uh, scientist can um, get up here is um, deputy director of med lab services. So don't is see is sign. that is that um how do I put it is that in law or that's just what happens is that just what tends to happen or is it something that is said that that's the way it has to be okay it it has always been happening and currently it is still happening but then I said before the the case um you know was. Uh, taken to the industrial court and it was ruled in our favor, but up okay. to now it has not been implemented. So that is it. So All right, pathologist, I see. Uh, pathologist heading the medical laboratory services. Mm-hmm. But the highest we can get up here is um, assistant directors. But then I guess and the pathologist, the pathologists on their side, there are some that will say, well, to be in charge of, like if I remember correctly, that to be in charge of a lab, you need to also be able to not just do the lab work, but you also need to have knowledge of what's happening on the medical side. Because I don't know if it's the case there, but I think pathologists are supposed to be have like a medical degree, but also have a degree in lab, medical laboratory science. Or is that not the case? Yes, they are, they are medical degree alone. Ah, okay, I see. Because in like I'm in Benin, I'm in Benin Republic. Public. And so in Benin Republic, as well, our equivalent here of a medical, of a pathologist is someone who has a medical degree, but also has a degree in lab science. So you need to have both. So that's one of the reasons yeah, yeah. why here it's, uh, yes, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are getting it, yeah. Um, the pathologists, they have a medical degree. And, uh, yeah, is it a degree, say, kind of postgraduate um, studies in laboratory science? Ah, okay, I see. Here you need actually the full, you actually need the full degree. And so some would say that, well, yes, they have the medical degree, but they also have like some knowledge of the lab science too. Some, some knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> some knowledge yeah because at the end of the day you'll never be able to get as much knowledge as someone that's in there in the lab every, all day every day and that's doing the, the job because like the way i've always seen it is there's a difference right between actually working at the laboratory and work, working as a medical doctor because here as an example one of the things they would say is that as a medical laboratory scientist you need to have enough knowledge of medicine to be able to give comments like on the results when you are sending but the thing is the comments you are given should not be comments based on the state of the patient it should be comments 
based on what is likely to be happening is a doctor's job to then get your results. And then from your yeah. results, decide what he's going to do, decide on a diagnosis based on what you've done in the laboratory. I've always thought what's more important in the laboratory is to know how to do the test, how to do your quality control, how to ensure that your instruments are working correctly so that in the end, when you transfer the information, then the doctor, based on getting those accurate results, that accurate information, can then make his, diag his diagnosis. Because normally, when you go to medical school, you also learn about um, normal values and everything. So normally, when you, even if there was no comments coming from the laboratory, given that you are the one as a medical doctor who has seen the patient, when you have those yeah. values, you should know what is supposed to be. So it's not always that you need to get everything from the laboratory, but you need, so you need a certain basic amount of information. But I believe that basic amount of information is something that you can get from any medical laboratory scientist that is well-trained. Um, that's, 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 the, that's the thing. So we are mainly focused on uh, what we are meant to do as a profession. Uh, I don't think we are, we are encroaching into any other profession. So that's us. The only problem is um, heading our own profession. Our own profession. <laughs> that's where the issue comes in. So I don't think where you should be called uh, a profession if you don't even have uh, an, an, a level of independence or, or uh, I guess in, um, yeah, yeah. on your profession. So, um, and actually, the, I think one thing also is that people are complaining because they aren't necessarily seeing improvement in the profession. I mean, I don't think people would be complaining if it was pathologists heading the profession and then things were going fantastically well. Everybody would actually be happy. Everybody would probably be fine with it if everybody was in a good place. But I think also in many situations, people are saying, okay, they are there, but it's not like they are doing a job that's that much better than what a medical laboratory scientist would do. So in the end, the question is why not just let medical laboratory scientists head that if when you are coming in, you are not doing or adding anything special, actually. Yeah. And you know, um, the uh, medical laboratory, um, is, it's a very delicate one, very, very delicate. Uh, so any mistake from the lab, the patient is uh, as good as dead. So uh, I don't know, maybe that's from their own, maybe I'm trying to, you know, uh, reason from their own perspective. So maybe they feel we are not qualified enough to head it. So that's... I think that is where I think that where that's where their own argument is mm -hmm. is coming yeah. from my head. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Yeah, and also another issue I'd say we have in the medical laboratory scientist field is we don't try to act to show them that we can actually do what they think we can't do. So it's like you won't you won't find many that are going to try and learn more about what the medical laboratory, not the medical, they are, they are going to try and learn what the doctors are doing over there, like actively creating discussions with the medical doctors to know what kind of information they need, like in the comments, to learn a little bit more about them, to interact a lot more with them. It's like we stay on our own, but then we want to be involved, which is something that can't really necessarily happen in that way. That's one of the reasons why I was interested when you talked about getting involved in politics, because that's also one thing. You need to put a foot out there and then show that you can actually do what you say you want to do. Because if all you have done up till now is stayed in a laboratory and worked on the technical side, and then all of a sudden you say, okay, now I want to be in management. The question always is going to come back, okay, what kind of managerial experience do you have? What kind of leadership skills have you shown in the past that allow me to believe that you are actually going to do this job the correct way? That's one yeah. thing too that's important. We need to show that we have the skills that would allow us to head those so that people actually feel confident. Well, it's not even just about feeling confident. It's almost like you have to force them to let you do your job by showing that you are that good. And so at Probably, some point yes. they have to step back and then just let you do it because there is like there is no comparison to be made. Right now, 
they can still stay there. They can still stay at the top because they can still compare themselves to medical laboratory scientists because they can still point to some labs and then say, look at what those people are doing there. They aren't following the rules. They aren't doing the things, they aren't doing the things the correct way. That's why we need to stay. But I think if as a profession, we take ourselves a lot more seriously as a group, as a collective, things naturally are going to start getting better because uh, there is no yes. way that someone who spends all their time in, let's say the medical, on the medical side, on the purely medical side with patients would have the same knowledge as someone that's spending all of their time in the laboratory with the samples. Uh, well, the, the truth of the matter is uh, they are medical doctors for a reason. We are medical laboratory scientists for a reason. There are two different things. The only mm -hmm. thing we are interested majorly is to be the boss of our own profession. You can't have two professions and one is loading over another. So that is how it is here. So, but like um, what you said uh, about, you know, we showing that we can do it by getting involved in a uh, lot of um, activities and leadership. Um, yes. And I think uh, we are we are progressing because the, the new crop of um, scientists we are producing these days, uh, they're coming up. Coming up, so it wasn't um, like before. Okay, there is this example. Um, sometime last year, when we were inaugurated, so we went to meet um, our head in school. Mm -hmm. So he was really, really impressed. In their own days, they all they know is read, they pass, um, they care about their first class and all that. They don't care about any other thing. But then. If they had known, if they had known, they, 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 they would have, you know, gotten themselves a lot involved in. And if they had done that, they wouldn't be where they are today. So it was like uh, ad, an admonition or a clarion call to us, the younger ones, yeah. to, you know, get involved. So and I, I picked that. I picked that because, like I said here in my school, we are, we are really powerful and politically. You know, when you see people doing well uh, politically and you hear this person is a scientist a medical laboratory you'll be like ah, i thought these people what yeah. they know is you know uh, lab work uh, lab work uh, but then hiding behind books not exa exactly so it's not always there so our our mantra over here has always been working uh, um be, uh, working um uh, outside the bench uh, so it is, I think that bent work leads to a lot of people. I didn't say it's bad or anything, but then some people are pragmatic in nature. Some people are adventurous. They don't, they don't need to be tied down in a particular place. They have other skills. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, managerial skills. They have leadership skills. And when you subject, you know, um, those kind of people to you know, a confined apartment, okay, perform this test, perform this test, you send results, you see that you are limiting this person. So I, I think uh, we, we should be encouraged to, you know, explore other things. And that's, let me tell you the truth, that is what others have against us. That yeah. is what they have against us. Yes, that is what they have against us. That's um, ability to explore. Okay, you see um, a, 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 a medical doctor, he will come and do, you know, master's in public health. You see a pharmacist, pharmacist who do master's in uh, uh, public health, or maybe something totally outside their own profession, but within the medical um, confinement. Yeah. To learn no more about uh, to know more about you know the medical field. Uh, but mm. then in our own in our own case, it's um, a bit different. We are, so and I think a lot of that has to do with the mindset and mentality. You know when you are when you have a role model that is doing a particular thing. So most of the time you don't get to think above that role model. So you want to um, follow the same path. Uh, that your role model has followed. So I think we are still, we are coming up. I, I believe that. But then we still need more people, right? More, I have some people that are, you know, very, when I mean very, very good in the profession, that are doing very, very well. And not necessarily on the bench. So these are yeah. people we, you know, um, um, looking up to. They are people we should be uh, looking at and then try to build on what they already have. Uh, because, so what are, uh, what are you doing, for example, like outside of the bench, away from the um, bench? Some, um, some people, um, there are areas like the SATS. I have 
um, a professor that is uh, into research. In fact, he has a research laboratory. His own, uh, her own laboratory, purely research, yeah. not um, a, a conventional uh, uh, MLS um, lab. Hey, it's just purely research. He's fully into research. So mm-hmm. I have another one that um, has that so much in oncology and, and cancer advocacy. So in fact, he has a, a, a cancer um, um, non-profit government and he's winning grants and all that. So I don't think I've seen her work one day and event. So there are so many areas. To, um, some people are into, you know, um, medical equipment, you know, lab installations so these are yeah. so many areas so it's, it doesn't one mustn't be confined to um the, the lab work per se so there are so many areas to explore yeah to explore so i some i have i know someone that's also into reagent preparation so yeah. that's his mega work preparation and distribution and some also are into supply chain management so these are a lot of um Tops areas that you know one can you know venture into. The problem is we are not exposed. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the problem. We are not exposed enough. So um, you have your skill, you have have the laboratory skills, you have the degree. But then when you look outside, what that degree can get you, I think that is where the um exposure mindset comes in. So yeah, exactly. It's not just I yeah I went to school, I finished a five years course. And um, my dream is to uh, get to a work in a teaching um, hospital or in a federal medical center, and that is all. So uh, that is not, it's not, uh, um, it doesn't all go well. And that, yeah. that is where the, the problem, you know, the problem is with most people. But um, I think a lot of people are um, getting to know more. About the profession, um, so it's just that we have few um, role models to follow. So, but I believe we are getting there. Yeah. And one last thing. So politically, like at the level uh, you are now, you said you, there are also many other from the medical lab- from the students like you in the medical laboratory science sector who are involved in politics at the graduate level like you. Uh, what are some initiatives that you try to put in place to help a little as far as the medical laboratory science field is concerned? Are there some things you've been doing that maybe other students who are watching this could Let's say try and implement where they are. Okay. Um, uh, among the host of things, um, recently I've been into cancer research and okay. advocacy. Yeah, uh, that's I think that is where I want to you know put that. So I've, I've I've been doing a lot of courses and then following that up. I'm, I'm into um that cancer research. So, but um aside that, uh, we have you know I'm trying to keep up. A lot of things because majorly or oh, the problem we know that the problem is um you know that's exposure that's lack of you know um, orientation so majorly what we um do here as politicians or student politicians is awareness to tell the students look our work is not just here it doesn't end here uh, you should you should you don't you don't you shouldn't limit your mindset you should try to explore that um, opportunity so that's basically what we um, have been doing here by organizing um, so many programs like so many even some podcasts you know we invite people, you know, people that are doing very well in the profession to come and, you know, the simple kind of symposium, come and talk to these students, let them see yeah. somebody, okay. Um, because a lot of, some people, uh, I see, have, are losing hope on the profession, maybe for their own uh, personal beliefs, or maybe they think there is no future in the profession or so. But then when you, when they get to hear these people, they have the, the orientation, they'll be like, ah, this is actually achievable. It doesn't just yeah. end here. So, that's basically what we um, are into. That's what we basically try to um, shape in the, the, the mindset again. So that's it. Thanks a lot for sharing your opinions with us here today. And I think a lot of people who are watching this are going to potentially see things a little bit more differently and may try to get involved a little bit more with associations around them and at the various levels at which they are talk a little bit more about medical laboratory science, 
the problems that are that some face in the field, all the solutions that could be brought up by medical laboratory scientists at various levels. And thanks a lot for taking the time to speak to us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. Do you have any last words? Um, all I need to say is um, we need to sit up. We need to realize we shouldn't um, have a, a confined mentality in one place. Uh, we need to explore. Um, yeah. In summary, we need to be, you know, adventurous, and people need to hear about. Them. Thanks a lot, and hopefully we we'll talk to you again next time, very soon. Uh, welcome. I'm always available. All right. All right. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay. Let me stop this.